The year 2020 marked the Backcountry Discovery Route's 10th anniversary. Over the past decade, the BDR has created 10 backcountry routes, encompassing over 10,000 miles of some of the most desirable terrain available for dual sport and adventure motorcycling enthusiasts. We created this film to tell the behind the scenes story about how this grassroots, non-profit organization was founded, the evolution of the concept, and some insights into the future of the BDR. The BDR story actually begins with another organization's route, the Oregon Backcountry Discovery Route, which has existed since the late 1990s. According to Leonard Kearns, president of the Oregon Off-Highway Vehicle Association, this route was the brainchild of Bob and Cheryl Greenstreet. Kern points out that the development of the route was financed by the Oregon ATV Allocation Funds. On-the-ground signs were placed and the route was dedicated in the summer of 2000. Unfortunately, it didn't take long for people opposed to the route to bring legal action. Support from the Forest Service and the Bureau of Land Management was lost, and all remaining funds were used to remove the signs. In August of 2000, Tom Myers and Xander Nosler, both from Seattle, Washington, ride the Oregon Backcountry Discovery Route, spending five nights on their 950-mile backcountry adventure. I learned about the Oregon BDR in 1999 when a friend of mine called and said, hey, I just discovered this on the internet, do you want to write it? What he had was a series of topo maps. He got on the computer, you know, and, and connected it together with a GPS and made a GPS route. So we did it and it was really fun. Myers, who is president of Psychoactive Incorporated, doing business as Tortec USA, publishes the very first story about the OBCDR online at psychoactive.com. I put up a website about it because I thought it was an incredible opportunity to get people out in the backcountry. For nearly a decade, this ride report is the most widely read story about adventure motorcycling on the OBCDR. I organized a system for Bob and Cheryl Greenstreet who created the Oregon route People would send them 20 bucks, and then I would email the tracks to the person. In 2009, Paul Gillian joins Tortec USA as general manager. The company's president, Tom Myers, decides the two of them should go on a ride to the Oregon BDR as a way for Paul to get some experience using the company's ADV motorcycle products in a real-world environment. Getting paid to spend a week riding motorcycles sounded good to me. Uh, being a marketing guy, though, I wanted to get some content out of it. So um, we called Sterling Noreen and Helge Pedersen uh, to help us create some video footage that we could use in our trade show booth and on a YouTube video, and then to have still photography for advertising and magazine stories and things like that. And so that's kind of the seed that started it all. We are out there because we think this is fun. This is a good excuse to get out of town, out of the office. Well, this is the second night on the trail here. We found a great place to camp. Everybody's productively working behind me. They've already taken their baths in the river, washed their clothing, gathered firewood, and now they're just about ready to start cooking some food. They are the two best people that you can have on a trip like this because uh, Helge's experience as a photojournalist, and then uh, Sterling Noren being our, our storyteller. He is the guy that can go out for uh, a week or, or three months, whatever you need. He can travel on a motorcycle. He has all the equipment, and his path in life is storytelling through video. The group rides the OBCDR for seven days in August of 2009, and then publishes a short film about their trip on YouTube in the fall of 2009. We knew our starting point, but beyond that, nothing was planned. We didn't know where we were gonna camp, where we were gonna get fuel. We had a route, but really that was it. The rest just kind of fell into place, and that was part of the adventure and part of what made it so fun was just waking up in the morning and knowing you're gonna ride your motorcycle, but beyond that, not having defined timelines or plans. It's really important that we get out here and, and use the backcountry and show people what you can do in this incredible backcountry. That's the only way 
that it could get passed on to the next generation. The following year, the first published ride report about the OBCDR appears in the February 2010 issue of Roadrunner magazine. Another story from the trip runs in the 2010 Tortec catalog. Both articles are authored by Gillian with photographs by Patterson. And the YouTube video is viewed by tens of thousands of people. The YouTube video just got seen by a lot of people and had an impact on people far beyond what we ever imagined. Upon seeing this YouTube video, two local Seattle entrepreneurs, Bryce Stevens, founder of Trails.com, and Andrew Cole, then CEO of Remote Medical Inc., are inspired to create a similar route in Washington State. Well, Washington needs uh, a route like this. Uh, there isn't, from what I can tell, there isn't a route across Washington for adventure motorcyclists. Their idea gains momentum and then is awarded the 2010 Overland Flag for best proposal of an expedition at Overland Expo. <laughs> the prize, a modest 200 bucks. Being awarded the Overland Flag Expedition kind of gave us a new excuse to spend a little more time and, and find this new route. Stevens and Cole envisioned making a documentary film to share with the ADV community. Inspired by the famous route in Oregon, they settle on a name, Washington Backcountry Discovery Route. When we started planning this, uh, I was having so much fun looking at all of the roads and all of the different ways to cross the state. I just think that eventually there are going to be so many people talking about this that uh, it's going to be very, very exciting. I was uh, introduced to Bryce Stevens and Andrew Cull by a friend of mine, Don Stefanian, who met the two of them down at the Overland Expo. These guys were really focused and I knew they had the right vision, the right skills, and the right passion to be able to create what they were proposing. One day Sterling Noreen called us and said that he had met a couple guys who wanted to create a Washington backcountry discovery route. The two come to Tor Tech with their idea and over lunch ask Myers and Gillian to assist with the project and provide funds to cover the film's expenses. I, I've been through this before. I created a, a book for hiking in Seattle and it impacted a sold at least 10,000 copies at this point in time. I feel like I can, I can help a lot of people get outside. And it was kind of funny when we met them, they said they thought that we would laugh and tell them to get out of the office, and that was so far from the truth. This is exactly what we wanted to do. Before the check comes for the meal, Gillian agrees to help with the project, and Myers agrees to pay for it. Neither of them have any idea how much time and money would be contributed from Tortec USA in support of the BDR in the years that follow. We ran it through Touratech USA, and quite frankly, I didn't even tell him how much money we were spending. He would ask, well, how much are we into this thing? And I'd say, Tom, I don't know. I don't have time to add up all the numbers, but you know, it's, it's more than $10,000. It was a lot more than $10,000. The WA BDR filming expedition takes place in August, 2010. 10 years ago I rode the Oregon Backcountry Discovery Route and when we finished that we said well the first thing we're going to do is make a, a route across Washington. And I've been wishing I could do this for 10 years. So today we're on the first day and I'm excited to ride. If you live in Washington and you haven't ridden across the state you're really missing out. If you need to a recharge and need an adventure it's just put the key in the ignition and head out. When you do it and achieve it, it's fantastic feeling. So shot. for this shot, just ride this we way. Will. And Helge and I will get back on the bikes and we'll follow down there and we'll meet you. Okay. It feels so good to now have a chance to give something back to this place that I call home, that I grew up in, and to be able to share the amazement of this region. I feel like I'm walking away with more than enough material from this to be able to tell the story. For me, this is the longest motorcycle ride I've done. It's a lot of fun, of course, and at the same time, it's a heck of a commitment. Yeah. Oh, shit, 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 shit. Oh, <laughs> going the bloopers. <laughs> Very amazing to get out and actually ride it and see what I conceived by drawing it as a highlighter on a map. The idea is to get out into the backcountry and camp, see what Washington has to offer. The highlight of my trip was definitely the um, improvement that I've made as a rider. Oh, shit. <laughs> the P 
people here all like really gelled well and were able to really focus on what we were here to do, but also have you know a lot of good fun while we were doing it. I got a chicken stew with um, a little bit of uh, onions and a few secret ingredients. We are just now wrapping up the Washington backcountry discovery route. And the funny thing is that uh, even though we're not quite done yet, uh, members of our team are already talking about what's next. I hope we, we influence so many people to get out and ride and do this one, and I can create another one and influence and impact more people. After the expedition, Gillian authors an article featuring Pedersen's photos, which appear in Tortec's first issue of Travel Time magazine. The original acronym and logo abbreviation for the project was WBCDR, Washington Backcountry Discovery Route, modeled after the OBCDR. But Myers comes up with the idea to use a state abbreviation combined with BDR as the naming convention. The idea stuck and future BDRs were named accordingly. After we got back from creating the Wobder, we realized this could be done in every state in the West. And I got on the web and bought all of the domains for the 11 Western states. Developer Chuck Thomas of Technic Studios donates his time and expertise and develops the first BDR website. We have got a lot of feedback and we've been uh, what we have done with that feedback is created a frequently asked questions that we've put up on our website that helps people plan and we're going to continue to do that as people have feedback we're going to answer the questions and try and turn it over to the community so that they can uh, plan and have a good trip. The group also partners with Butler Maps to create the first high quality waterproof BDR motorcycle map for the Washington route. Butler Maps came on board, interestingly enough, as a financial sponsor, um, but without the intention of making the map, which was kind of funny. And then it was an afterthought that we thought to make uh, an actual map of this. It became just this inseparable part of the BDR and what it is, having the Butler map of each route. You have a big map that showcases all the segments, all the details, and then you can download the tracks on the BDR website and then, um, you know, ride the ride. Seeing the potential of the by the community for the community concept, Gillian leads the effort to form the BDR as a nonprofit organization. A 501c4 nonprofit organization is initiated by Gillian, Stevens, Myers, Noreen, and Tim Bowman. BDR hires graphic designer Paul Lysette to create the BDR Shield logo and graphic identity for the organization. We create the route, but we give away the tracks so that everybody can do it. At the time, although Touratech had invested a, <clears throat> a small fortune to get it off the ground, we didn't want it to be a Touratech thing. We didn't want it to be a for-profit thing. We really wanted this to be by the community, for the community. And so it took us a couple of years to get all the pieces in place and to really start operating in, in that way. But it, um, pretty early on, we, we sort of sent it in that direction. This young organization agrees to ensure that the route GPS tracks will remain free to the community and commits to the idea of inspiring people to ride in the backcountry while seeking to share best practices for safety and preserving riding opportunities. In February of 2011, the group adopts Articles of Incorporation and Bylaws. All of the money goes there and is in a nonprofit that, that is working hard to educate, to share these routes, and to protect these riding areas to keep them open for motorcyclists. Four months later, the BDR team meets Rob Watt at the Tortec Rally in Plain, Washington. Watt offers to help with route development for the next project, the Utah BDR. In September of 2011, the team films its second route, the Utah BDR, with Stevens and Watt being the route development leads. I'm kind of the trail master of the, of the trip. I've been doing the majority of the scouting of, of this ride. So you want to just explain what that pile, where that pile's come from? <laughs> from my pants after that mud. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we call him Mr. Speedy. No, we don't. <laughs> He's not a fast rider. Rob is steady and smooth. We counted how many bags he had in Utah, and that was nine nine bags on his motorcycle. If every time you stop, you have to F around with nine bags, you have too many bags. These guys are having bacon and pancakes and <laughs> eggs florentine, yet this is camping right here, right here. The freeze-dried food thing, I'm hoping to wean him off of. What are you eating there? I'm just eating my goo because Justin Bradshaw 
from Butler Maps would not share his pastrami with me. Should be good. We had bacon an hour ago and now we're having, that's a meat kind of day. Pepperoni chasers. I'll just eat my goo here in my quiet spot. He worked out the logistics of the route. He found the gas stations. You know, me personally, I just, I like anything to do with riding. So if there's an adventure and we can go ride, I'm in. Where did the name Climb come from? That's a really good question. You know, the most important part is we wanted something that was a four-letter word. Uh -huh. And it had to sound aggressive, so. I and it, it spells milk backwards. <laughs> it's the most ingenious part of the whole thing. <laughs> this spells milk! <laughs> <laughs> Well, Joe and I got a call about a week before the project. Uh, even before I knew the details, I said yes. I'm actually driving a Jeep. I wanted to make sure that the filming was done properly, and I think if I was going to be riding a motorcycle, I wouldn't get the filming done properly. You know when you have those off days where nothing makes sense to you? That's 364 days a year of my life. <laughs> <laughs> this type of thing is essentially a dream assignment for someone like me. We're actually going to have a contest between uh, his sleeping bag setup and my dual uh, fleece blanket uh, device that I just picked up in Blanding. Where's your sleeping bag? Right here. You didn't bring one? Buddy. Did you forget or was this uh, part of the master plan? Yeah. Um, it, it was part of the master plan. <laughs> My least favorite part of the day was yeah. crashing in the mud. So <laughs> the key is not to gun it like I did trying to straighten myself out when you get cross -threaded. He somehow ended up like on his back in the motorcycle, his front wheel was like laying on his head and he did a little spin move and then popped out from underneath the front wheel of his motorcycle with his whole entire side just totally brown. Where do we put medical waste? <laughs> medical waste. Bradshaw would go on to provide character and comic relief in many BDR films. He is also an advisor to the organization and core part of the BDR team in the early days. Two thousand twelve, the team films its third route, the Colorado BDR, with Watt being the primary route architect. For his outstanding contributions, Rob Watt is nominated to serve as a board member for the organization. If you look back over here, you'll see this little mud puddle. And as soon as I went through it, my front end started to go right a little bit, then my back end was in front of my front end. The Colorado Backcountry Discovery Route is the third one in the series. We've got two local guys here from the state of Colorado. They are showing us the best that this state has to offer for adventure touring motorcycles and dual sport travel. exciting, it's beautiful, and you can get across the whole state and stay off road and have a good time and be safe about it, and that's what we're trying to do. Colorado is all about altitude, I think, going up and down, and I'm looking forward to that. And I got really lightheaded. I thought I was going to fall over. And this section that we saw today with the pass is uh, mind-blowing. You don't see that stuff in, in other BDRs. Just a lot of beautiful scenery, a lot of great riding. Lots of different terrain. I went down pretty hard right on that big rock. I was advised to not ride anymore. Picked up some ibuprofen and here I am. Yeah, I'm glad you're back. back. We missed you. Yeah. Been a blast. I can't wait to see what else is coming up. The whole concept of backcountry touring, backcountry riding, adventure motorcycling is one of the most dynamic, most exciting new chapters in exploring the American West that uh, I've encountered in many years. That's an example of riding beyond your comfort zone. And then of course our, our crew members as far as, you know, Sterling doing the video and John doing all the photos. I mean, those guys are amazing. There's very few people in the world that have those talents that can ride and still have that professional uh, skill set. I'm so happy to finally have three of these in the books. As the BDR organization begins to outgrow its volunteer workforce, Ina Thorne is recruited to become the Director of Operations on a part-time basis. She brings experience in the nonprofit sector and a passion for adventure riding, having previously traveled for six months on a motorcycle through South America. 
Adventure motorcycling has been a passion of mine for over a decade, ever since my motorcycle trip to South America in 2009. And the wonder of exploring the world on two wheels is something I'm able to share with thousands of people through my work at the BDR organization. And in a small way, I'm able to contribute to so many people having adventures of their lifetime. Her responsibilities include fundraising, project management, and community relations. Her capabilities and drive quickly deliver results for the organization. Ina was working for us at the time for Touratech USA, and I had her sit down in my office one day. I said, Ina, will you take over the BDR? I want you to manage this thing. Uh, the main thing you have to do is, is increase the fundraising. And um, she, she jumped at the chance, and boy, she had the right skill set. At the Colorado BDR premiere in Seattle, during the Q&A, Thorne asks why there are no women in the BDR films and throws her helmet into the ring as a potential writer on the next film. Ina makes her debut as the first woman in a BDR film in the Arizona documentary. It's gonna be tough. I don't know if I can make it. We'll see. In the beginning, you know it will be a big challenge and you're not sure of your abilities to complete it. Um, then you struggle and you persevere through all these challenges and difficult roads and conditions. Um, and then the end, you come out triumphant and it's just such an amazing feeling. And every time I ride a BDR, uh, that feeling never leaves me. By the end of the ride, she was leading the ride and ahead of everyone else. The project also includes motorcycling celebrity Austin Vince, a British long-distance adventure motorcyclist best known for his two round-the-world expedition films, Mondo Enduro and Terra Circa. Where are you from? London, England. How about you? Moscow, Russia. Hey, what about and you? Austria. Oh. oh, cool. We have an international crew here. Yes. Well, all from the Eurasian land mass. When he pulled up and his helmet fell off, inside of it were socks stuffed up like in the liner. This is like a 30-year-old helmet or, or older. We want to break out of claustrophobic, conservative, repressive America into the freedom of Bisbee. Oh, don't get caught. If you get in trouble, come back. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Bisbee, hippie capital of this bit of Arizona. State bazooka. Okay, George. <laughs> Good sir. <laughs> You want to enjoy yourself on your dual sport bike or your adventure bike and see what you've never seen before, then this is what you should be doing. I decided to bring these pants along because my girlfriend Sarah never lets me wear these at home. I wouldn't have expected to find as, as much water as we did in Arizona, but it's been good when we find it. Right now we're on Pioneer Pass, and this is one of the sections that defines what the BDR is all about. So these are the roads that we're after, and this, what, this is what really makes it worth it. Wow, this is cool. What's the name of this lake? It's Long's Lake. <laughs> is there an S on it? Is it Long's Lake or Long Lake? Long Lake. No. It's Long's Lake. Um, Long Lake. <laughs> Long Lake, god damn it. It's Long's Lake. Long Lake. Fuck, you're fired. Let's talk to Bradshaw. This interview's over. I had a gemtastrophe in my pioneer, and it's a mess. Mm. Yeah, that sucks. Long couple days, and I need a shower, and I found one. Managing chafe. It's a very important aspect of adventure riding. My favorite way to do it, just the dump and shake. Dump and shake. <laughs> Check out the cool campsite we found tonight. My God! My tent pulled up, so I decided I should sleep on top of my tent instead of in my tent. So I hopped around in my sleeping bag and got my pillow, and when I did that, my pad 
blew away into the desert on the edge of the cliff. So I dropped my sleeping bag so I could run faster and I couldn't find my shoes and I grabbed my sleeping bag but I was naked. So I was running around the desert about 2 a.m. naked. This morning I went on a hunt for my pad and I have found it in a crevice about 30 feet down the side of this canyon. And I'm going to get it. Success. I cannot believe that I found it. I'm really grateful that women have increasingly had a role in the BDR. We've got super volunteer Tracy Jeffries, who has been instrumental in almost everything that we've done. It's about the people for me. I've made such great friends, and I just love this community. We had Shell Marie Wilson, who's an ambassador. She was also um, in one of our film projects. I absolutely love adventure writing. I love connecting with people from all over. Um, our last project, we had both Ina and Jocelyn Snow that really took it to another level. I kind of made it like, for me, my internal mission to inspire other riders, to inspire women, short riders, men, even riders who've been riding for many, many years, to get out and, and see some new places. I mean, the world is, is a huge adventure. Seeing so many women coming out and becoming adventure riders is so exciting. There's been a few times that we've come off of a BDR route and there's some guys that didn't make it, but all of a sudden all the women show up. We may be late, but you know, we do make it and we make it safe. I think in general, women bring a different perspective to adventure riding. Riding groups of men tend to have a more competitive spirit. Women bring more compassion and camaraderie to a riding experience, and they're always encouraging and supportive. Many people, even those who live close, don't understand how accessible a lot of this beautiful dirt terrain is. And it's always interesting to see people's faces light up when we bring them through these areas. There's a huge amount of um, women influence in our organization from, from top to bottom and it's been really fun to have those sort of collaborations and, and they've been really instrumental in, in the path that we've been on. In 2014, the first coordinated BDR film tour at dealerships and theaters across the country is organized, featuring the Arizona documentary. The dealer premieres have been a runaway success. In the winter, that's when people start dreaming about the riding season and making plans to explore on two wheels. Uh, and we work with dealerships across the country who host uh, these special events at their stores and are able to bring customers to their shop during the off season. Anytime we can draw a good crowd on a wet, cold winter evening, it's, that's a good thing. What began as a 15-city tour in 2014 has now grown to over 60 screenings per film. Everybody's laughing, having a good time, they're asking the right questions about the kind of gear they need, the type of bikes they need. After the release of the Arizona BDR in 2014, what conceptualizes and hosts the first BDR fundraiser ride at a private ranch in Wickenburg, Arizona? BDR fundraisers bring together BDR friends, family, supporters, and industry insiders for a weekend of camping, meals, daily rides, socializing, evening presentations, and roundtable discussions with the BDR team. In 2014, the team films its fifth route, the Idaho BDR, with Stevens and Watt assisting local resident Bill Whitaker in developing the route. Now we're going to the mountains. This is a showcase of deserts and rivers and streams and mountains and wildlife. Black bears and grizzly bears. And people. Can't get much more beautiful in this country. John Summers broke his leg, so that kind of thing can happen in a split second. You really need to be aware of that. And you well, this is probably the high point of the Idaho backcountry discovery route. It's not technical, but it's long. And I think the opportunity to be so remote makes this a successful trip. Oh my gosh, that looks like the Four Seasons. Justin and Rob can just share a, a twin bed, I think. Justin wants to be Big Spoon. He's gonna be the Big Spoon, I'm the Little Spoon. Oh, great. Yeah. <laughs> Whitaker's connection to local government helps the organization receive its first tourism grant from the Office of Idaho State Tourism. We will bring you know, millions of dollars to that state every year. It makes a big impact on their local um, underserved communities. 
How many people live here all year? There were 22 last winter. There are a lot of great towns along the, the west side of the mountains that uh, people are gonna discover and really enjoy. These are the tiny off the beaten path places that on a map you see a name and doesn't really tell you the story of the town. It could be big, it could be small. You should take the time to talk to the people there. They're really excited about sharing their town with you and helping you out. It's nice, it's quiet, there's no people. Plus, I'll fix you dinner. <laughs> I have 2.7 gallons. The, the best mileage of all the KTMs. Well, I, I don't know if I'd go with best mileage. I'd just say you're not romping on it as much as the others are. Ah, dang it. Why did, who told you to say that? Did these guys? Yes. 16 oh, even. We've been picking on them for four days. It's about time someone else did. It was fun being a long trip, you know? Getting into it for several days and saying, hey guys, we got a thousand miles to go. I've been promoted, I guess, into cooking every night. Funny thing is that I'm gonna pull a Chef Eddie at the end. Yeah, I just wanna thank you for rubbing our meat last night. When you put my meat in your mouth, I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we couldn't find a more important historical area than the uh, Lolo area, both from the Native American standpoint and that of the Lewis and Clark expedition. What hardships it has for us that remains to be seen, but we're certainly traveling in finer style than Lewis and Clark, but you can get a good sense of the uh, of what they experience. The roads in, are endless. I mean, the dirt roads in Idaho, they just go on forever. I've already got a sense that they, they think this is one of the most amazing BDRs yet. We made it to Canada and that's a wrap. The Idaho BDR documentary is screened at the Sun Valley Film Festival, where it's introduced by Whitaker and Gillian. The BDR Ambassador Program is created to provide opportunities for BDR supporters to serve the BDR community and take a more active role in growing the organization and planning its future. We developed that ambassador program and it's been really successful. We have a huge sort of network or army of people that help us do the heavy lifting every day. Our internal team is pretty small, but we're crossing into the second decade uh, with two full-time employees. Uh, and then we're also fortunate to have a group of dedicated ambassadors all around the country who help us by attending and speaking at events, hosting booths at motorcycle shows, moderating Facebook group pages, and really doing anything um, that is required of them to help the BDR. In 2015, the team films at Six Route, the New Mexico BDR, with Rob Watt being the primary route architect. AMA board member and local New Mexico riding advocate, Roger Pattison, is instrumental in developing the route and joins the film expedition. The best thing about the Backcountry Discovery Route organization is getting people out into backcountry to see things they've maybe never experienced before. So being able to show people a defined route through New Mexico brings people closer to the culture and the heritage and the history that we all know about that live here. So as soon as you get out of Dell City, you hit the first dirt and it's like right outside of town. So weed is the first place to get gas. It's population 22. It's a great place to visit and a great place to live. Yeah, there's kind of a love-hate relationship with living in a rural town. If you live here, you're, it's unusual. If you drive by, oh, it's unique. <laughs> Winston General Store, it's like the guns and groceries store. We have bear, javelina, mountain lion, turkey. New Mexico is much more expansive views. You feel like you're in the scene of a Western movie. It's really a true piece of the American West. Shal Marie Wilson, who will later go on to found She ADV, joins in a BDR film. It looks like we're about out of the sand, which is good news for me. We have That's never had someone with a parasol on the BDR. <laughs> your, your thumbs up in my nice. right now. <laughs> it was a surprising trip. It's actually on, you know, the top BDRs for me, actually. You got a smile on your face, that's good. Of course. <laughs> We're on a BDR. Oh, gee! Whoa, whoa! Oh, shit. Licking my wounds. I think we should give Kevin a new nickname. Let's call him the geologist because he keeps taking mud samples and dirt samples all the way through the state of New Mexico. Uh, 
<laughs> For cooking on the side of the road with uh, what we can carry in our motorcycles, Kevin took the bar and just raised it right up here. Uh, tonight we were having uh, bratwurst. We're doing fried potato, corn with uh, red and green peppers. For later, we are going to attempt to do cinnamon rolls on the barbecue. <laughs> Saying goodbye to Kevin was really hard, actually. I've even told him if we could trade places, I would. He had ended up hitting a deer. That's the difference right there, boys. Size does matter. Getting a chance to disconnect from all the responsibilities of the company for 10 days. A lot of the other noise of your life kind of gets stripped away. Reserve's a great little town after being in the backcountry for about 150 miles. How long have you been sitting here this morning? I don't know, an hour or two, I guess. We have all these benches now. Watch those benches. At the annual fundraiser ride in Death Valley, BDR introduces Raise the Paddle fundraising inspired by BDR donors Glenn Johnson, Tim Smith, and Kent Clausen. We were a little bit uncomfortable asking people for money, especially after they just spent money to come and, and ride with us um, for the weekend. Uh, but uh, we did it anyways, and ever since it has been the most successful fundraising effort for the organization on an annual basis. Fortunately, we've always kept the fundraising just one step ahead of our needs, so we ha have not had um, cash crunch or financial crisis in many, many years. We're, we're conservative, we, we um, raise money well, and we spend the money wisely. One of the best ways to get an introduction to the BDR is to come to one of our fundraising weekends. It's about meeting new people, seeing old friends, it's riding, it's collaboration and it's the one weekend that we get to really truly connect with our supporters. It's everything that makes BDR special. My favorite part of the fundraiser is sharing what we have been up to uh, in the last year. Uh, this is a chance for us to introduce new people to the BDR mission uh, and excite them about riding the BDRs. This event is absolutely top-notch and I am so thrilled to be uh, a part of it. It's my first time at a BDR event. I'm impressed with the folks that are here, the number of bikes, the quality of the trails that you guys have put together for us to ride. I'm ready for the next event. Everything's just rich out and uh, organized very well so I think that really puts a good feeling in people like okay I can put some money into this. What did you think about the BDR fundraiser this year Ina? <laughs> Ina Thorne everybody. <laughs> fundraiser. This year Ina go. Okay. Court has been a part of the BDR family from the very beginning and I have to say he's got the best hair in the industry and it always seems to be changing. Your hair care product and stuff, you, you look good, you always look really good. Well, thank you very much, I, I work on that. You're the worst interviewer. I am a great interviewer, let's This is... Do you want me to put my glasses back on? It's like I need to just not look at Do you. you. Want to, you want to just... Is it true, I, I read something in Cycle News. Oh, oh, who's your dentist? Uh, you really have nice teeth. Oh, thank you. You do, they're real, I mean... I'll put my glasses back on. I'm <laughs> <laughs> so sorry. This is awesome, I love it. <laughs> hey, when has Tina ever been like... I don't have with anything it? to say <laughs> Okay. <laughs> have you been drinking already? No! You haven't? I think I'm jittery from coffee and you standing next to me. Okay. Okay. A lot of things that people say around here is you're 6'7", you're a pretty tall guy. Um, but proportionately, there's things that are smaller, right? I am I am totally built like a Ken doll. I'm smooth like a Barbie, like kind of like an injection molded plastic doll. It's true, <laughs> and I have small feet. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. Oh God, this was the worst. What? A new era for the BDR brand begins when Tim James becomes a BDR ambassador, and his firm, James Howard Creative Group, becomes the BDR's creative agency.
I knew that I wanted to help this organization. I knew it was a nonprofit. I knew that there was some there was a way that I could probably give back to the community, and that's with the services that, that, that I do for a living. You know, I knew I also had to earn the trust of the, the BDR leadership. That they're not just gonna let some guy from Jersey come in there and tell them how to market the BDR. In some small ways I would I would collaborate with them. I think the first project they gave me to help out on was like a Thanksgiving, you know, social post. Great, you know, we knocked it out of the park. Um, but there was more that we could do. I've been riding in New York State for probably 15 or 20 years. And over the years, I've gone from just being a, a road rider to being an adventure rider. And so for the last 10 or 12 years, I've been exploring the backcountry of, of New York. People always assume that BDR is bigger than it is uh, due to how our brand, our website, and our marketing materials look. And primarily, that is due to the exceptional work that Tim James and his team at James Howard does for the BDR. Tim is sort of our messaging guru. Um, he's the guardian of our visual and communication strategies, uh, and everything to him seems to be like a campaign. I think BDR is like Tim's adopted child, um, and I think we're all better for it. I don't know how the BDR operated before Tim James. He's a good friend, great rider, and just a huge part of the BDR. In 2016, the team creates its seventh route, the Nevada BDR, developed by Rob Watt with the assistance from local volunteer Curtis Cummings. The project is awarded a grant from the Nevada State Tourism. American Honda Motor Company steps in to help support with the Nevada project as they bring to market the CRF 1000L Africa Twin Adventure Bike. Honda's Keith Daddle is instrumental in Honda's support of the BDR. 11-time Baja 1000 champion Johnny Campbell appears in the Any BDR Expedition documentary film, along with BDR ambassador and longtime volunteer Tracy Jeffries. Board member Kevin Woody assists in the support vehicle. This week we've been in the Nevada desert. It's uh, been, been a little bit warm down in the south and we've been slowly making our way uh, to the north, which is kind of getting colder. Getting to explore Nevada on a, on a race-wise is a lot different than being able to go and uh, adventure through the backcountry of Nevada. You know, we'll be able to experience all these stops and places that, um, that we pass by racing, we don't get a chance to experience. You want to break away from the normal everyday grind of your going to your cubicle, being on your phone, and you want to get out and meet people and in the middle of nowhere and see what the rest of the world's like. That's what you get when you, you know, you go on a BDR trip. I'm a cowboy and a hooker last night. Crashed our party. Pew, 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 pew. Had lots of snow, a lot of ice, 15 miles, 20. It was quite the adventure. Don't fall because you won't have anyone to help pick you up. So be good. Just be steady. I was actually doing kind of okay, but it's getting icy. This is absolutely insane. <sighs> I don't know if we're going to make it. Talked to some guys up there and they took pity on us and, and uh, brought uh, two of my teammates down in the back of the truck. There's a bunch more bikes and they're over here struggling. I thought about doing that, but I thought, nah, I could get my bike down. It's pretty, pretty difficult, but I got it. I made it. I got through it. Oh, God. <laughs> I didn't die. <laughs> I'm still alive. So you're a part of the BDR ski team now. <laughs> yeah. uh. Always on the lookout for new funding opportunities, Thorne uses her experience in nonprofit fundraising to introduce the very first BDR holiday auction. I'm really proud of our holiday auction that has been happening online every December for the last five years. Not only it is an important fundraising vehicle for the BDR, but it is also a fun tradition and something unique that our community looks forward to every year. This concept is great for the BDR charity, it's fun and exciting for the bidders, and it also promotes the donating companies and their goodwill. So everybody wins. Over the years, BDR has expanded its original mission of creating and preserving riding opportunities to now also include efforts in increased investments in safety and education, access and advocacy, and economic impact programs. 2017, the BDR receives the AMA Hazel Kolb Brighter Image Award. 
the American Motorcyclist Association's highest award honoring organizations and individuals who generate positive publicity for motorcycling. To help quantify the economic impact of the BDRs, the BDR commissions an economic impact study led by two university professors from Florida Atlantic University. So when you go to a company or a um, local state government and you tell them about this BDR thing and how we're going to bring money to the state, they oftentimes want to see the white paper or have you, have you prove it in some way. The study shows that in 2017, BDR riders spent $17.3 million in out-of-state tourism dollars on the seven BDR routes that exist at the time. It also shows that 1,170 motorcycles were purchased in 2017 to ride BDR routes. It gives us a really good tool now when we go out to talk to an OEM like KTM or BMW, we can show in this report that BDR sold you know, 1,170 motorcycles in 2017. That's a lot of bikes, that's a lot of money. So it's making a big impact and now we can kind of prove it. The Mid-Atlantic BDR is created by board member Kevin Woody and becomes the first BDR route on the East Coast. We had a lot of positive feedback from the community for years. One of the negative things we would time to time hear is, how come you guys don't have a route on the East Coast? And the only reason we didn't have a route is because we just didn't have the roots. We didn't have anybody that had been willing to take it on. Kevin Woody, he was the guy that got us really started. He was the first guy that said, I can do it, I'll, I'll spend the money, I'll spend the time to help create a, a route out east. And so uh, we feel like we're supporting that half of the country and that's um, a great feeling. So we really wanted to try to sort of introduce the BDR to the East Coast riders that wouldn't normally have access to such a ride. Um, and that route took us just over three years to map out. In the Northeast, the states are quite a bit smaller than they are out west. So for the Mid-Atlantic, I think we knew we had to make a multi-state route. And it was the first one that we would develop in that, in that fashion. The effort he put out to, to develop the Mid-Atlantic BDR is, was just amazing. And he traveled back and forth for over two and a half years to come out and scout the East Coast. It, it's amazing what he did to bring the BDR to the East. You know, I was really nervous about it because it really isn't a hundred percent the same of all of the other BDRs. I knew the impact it was going to have. There is a lot of adventure riders on the East Coast, more than, than I think the BDR probably realized. East Coast adventure riders were hungry for a route. And when the route launched, I think we sold out of the first maps within the first six months, which was a record breaker for us. My name is Jack O'Connor, and I'm here uh, for the adventure of my lifetime. Wake up. All right, come on. I'm Reverend Jack Splash, pastor of the Church of the Holy Four Stroke. My son says to me one time, Daddy, I know why you go ride on Sunday, so you don't have to go to church. And I said, we pray in the woods. So for me, this was excellent because I didn't have to deal with jet lag, time zones, temperature differences. The reason why I think the MABDR was so successful was not only that we have an abundance of adventure riders out here, but we have very little riding opportunities for adventure riders. It's gonna be a really good opportunity for a lot of people here to get their feet wet with a, with a route that's not intimidatingly difficult. <laughs> Scratch that, rewind. That was absolutely one of the best. What excites me the most about the BDRs is the camaraderie that I would always get a preview of, a snapshot every time I would watch the videos. A little deet to keep the ticks away. Whew. That's stinky. Oh, okay. Deet, because there's a lot of teats in here. Deets in here. <laughs> ticks in here. They're awesome riders, so uh, you know, being able to keep up with them uh, makes me feel good. Hello, cow. <laughs> I'm just having a hard time this morning. <laughs> we are at the lodge that they filmed 
the movie Dirty Dancing. Come to me! <laughs> no one backs baby in a corner. I don't know what kind of dance it is, but it's not good. Come on, let's go. So we gotta we gotta ride a fast horse and a small pony. I don't know what that means. Ride a fast I don't know what that means. Pony? But Louis well, Lamour co called and wants his phrase back. <laughs> So there's a lot of fun, fun, innocent pranks that we do. This morning, my bike was toilet papered. They had to have used an entire roll to cover up that big fat bike. So Kevin, Woody, and Ina have the same gloves. So I just switched Ina's gloves out for Kevin, Woody's gloves. I feel like O.J. Simpson right now. <laughs> no, hey, I think this I is not a Zima in my hand. <laughs> this is not. Jazuma. It's not a Zima. Jazuma. It's, it's a knockoff. It's an Ima. Oh my god. <laughs> no. And I'm only drinking this because. <laughs> Did you just have a stroke or what? Rogers had a stroke over here. I'm only drinking this because. What the fuck? <laughs> I think we just need to reboot him. Yeah, just, <laughs> the CPU just stalled. BDR Documentary Films is founded, and BDR becomes the producer of its own documentaries. Our production crew has grown over the years. First it was just Sterling being the one-man band. Uh, he was the cameraman, the editor, the storyteller, and the director of the film. Uh, and he continues to be our filmmaker today because very few people can edit a documentary and tell the story about adventure motorcycles like Sterling can. I guess I've always been attracted to the challenges of motorcycle filmmaking because it's a very unique kind of filmmaking. I love being able to have the experience in the field, in the wilderness, but then be able to go back home and have time to reflect on those images and stories and put them together in a different way. We have added more people to our production team, including a second cameraman, a drone operator, and a photographer. And the cool part about these guys is that they all ride motorcycles on the trip. So my role on this trip is to capture uh, all the action. I try to pack as small and light as I can, and so I, that sort of translates to the gear I use filming. Something I can keep in my tank bag, pull out at any time. I'll be moving ahead and getting some creative shots of the groups riding by, the B-roll of everyone hanging out at camps and dinners, and uh, really just showing the action of what we do. The hardest thing has been to up the ante on every film. In the 10 years since we've started doing BDR movies, a lot has changed in technology. Um, we didn't use drones in the beginning, and now you can't make a movie like this without a drone. First world problems, Sterling. We're ordering a new drone with a sat phone, but I'm on hold at Touratech right now. I don't want to tell you about getting a drone stuck in the tree. <laughs> we lost a drone in the tree. We hear the rotors chopping at the leaves. Okay. Paul, get on up there, shimmy on up there and grab that now. I learned a lot on this trip about flying a drone. The terrain here is so epic and there's thick trees, so to be able to get above the canopy and uh, see the riders from the air, see the trail from the air, see the curves uh, from the air is fantastic. And that's basically being a bird, right? Bird's eye view is awesome. So it's what I got to experience the BDR as a bird. In 2018, Tim James leads the effort to rebrand the BackCountryDiscoveryRoutes.com domain to a shorter, catchier version of RideBDR.com. BackCountryDiscoveryRoutes.com, which was the URL at the time, was just far too long to remember. So I called Paul and I said, Paul, I bought the URL RideBDR.com. And I think that's how I got Paul's attention and, and was able to, you know, kind of get in the fold a little bit, a little bit deeper. An access and advocacy allocation fund is created to support other nonprofit organizations that protect and expand riding opportunities like Corva, New Mexico OHVA, Trails Preservation Alliance, and others. Corva advocates for off-road vehicle users all across California. 
they want to take away our land and we need to stand up and fight them. You know, getting people off the couch and making them understand that they can make a difference, it completely ties into our mission, which is to preserve trails. ICBDR is the sort of umbrella organization for off-road access advocacy and educational funding. While we're not necessarily set up to do trail maintenance, road cleanup, or even lobbying, we are very good at galvanizing the community support and raising money for these causes. Had our first um, winning grant that we were able to, to fund recently that opens up a bunch of really primo riding area in New Mexico. So that has been super positive. They're building bridges and opening up this amazing riding area. And BDR provided some of the anchor funds in collaboration with the Trail Preservation Alliance to make that happen. BDR riding, it really depends on our access to public lands. And so if we do a good job and uh, take good care of it, hopefully it'll be available to us to ride, you know, for generations. In 2018, BDR receives trademarks for backcountry discovery routes and BDR from the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office. James Howard Creative Group completely redesigns the BDR website, rebuilding it from the ground up as a custom WordPress site. The website has everything you need to know to plan your BDR ride. Where to stay, where to camp, where to get groceries, what time of year to go, how to pack. We don't rate the routes on a difficulty level. However, we do give a little bit of insight as what to expect along the routes, whether they're a little technical or a little on the easy side, so that you can make your decisions on whether this part of the route or the entire route is, is right for you. We created a Facebook group page for each one of the 10 routes where you can get introduced to the local riding community in that area and get real-time information of what's happening on the route that very minute. The introduction of the route pages, I think, was the missing component in our communications. It's our direct line to, to the riders. BDR Ambassador Jill Oliver integrates a new system for interactive maps using a cloud-based GIS mapping software for displaying all of the BDR route maps on the site. The user experience of the new website is to be able to see the routes, understand the mileage, as well as seeing what are the conditions on the route and to see whether it's passable at your current state and time. So the really cool thing about that interactive map is that it's real time. You can go onto an individual route page and navigate an interactive map, shows you the entire route, everything you need to know about that route. So weather, snowpack, forest fires, rain, you name it. So it, there's a safety aspect to that. You can navigate around potential issues on the route real time. BDR rolls out its first safety campaign, the Ride Right program. The concept is developed by Brad Sean Watt with graphics produced by James Howard Creative Group. In the last year, the BDR has introduced an initiative called Ride Right, which is a great program to encourage riders to stay to the right of the track. So, you know, the best practice is to stay to the right uh, when in question or, or all the time if you can. BDR's ninth route, the Southern California BDR, which has been in development for a number of years, is finally ready to be ridden and filmed. Three California locals helped develop the route in collaboration with Rob Watt. KTM North America becomes title sponsor for the BDR organization with a two-year sponsorship program. KTM Factory Racer, Dakar Rally Competitor, and four-time Baja winner Quinn Cody joins as the guest celebrity. So my name is Quinn Cody. I currently work for KTM in research and development. A big part of my job is uh, developing dual sport bikes, things like that for KTM. KTM's involvement in the BDR is, it really lines up very well with our core values. You know, just the fact that the BDR is helping to establish and protect routes for our customers to get out and ride their motorcycles. In North America, we have unlimited access to off-road riding like this, and not everyone knows that. It's really great that there's a group like the BDR that is establishing places for people to go and, and ride their motorcycles. This is the biggest group we've ever had. Being the practical guy, I'm a little worried about logistics. A group of 13 can get. Why was I invited? I, I presume just for my good looks and make everybody feel young since there's just a bunch of old people around here. I'm an old cow pie. If you could please be quiet, trying to do my work here. I brought your swimsuit for you. That probably isn't gonna make the film. We'll get hate mail over that. People don't go to BDRs to watch man floating in a river and American flag speedo. I think uh, our support vehicle is cursed. And, uh, last night we almost burned it to the ground. <laughs> this to me is 
is a lot like backpacking on a motorcycle. The difference is, is that with the adventure bikes, you can actually travel much greater distances, but you still have that same type of adventure, the same type of experience. I really like the adventure bike community. It's so much fun to get out and ride and camp. Just, it's opened it up. It's created a new freedom. You know, we've ridden, you know, pieces of this over the years, and, and it's turned out to be, I think, a, a really great representation of what Southern California, you know, riding in the desert's all about. It's really close to our hearts. It's something that we absolutely have to be behind. Overall, it was a, it was a fantastic day, beautiful scenery, uh, advanced route uh, for sure. Well, this is the story of my life on a BDR. It's all hurry up and wait. Right now we're in position to film a little sand action. I was feeling pretty confident going into the sand, but I hit a rock or something, just flew over the handlebars, hit my lip in the helmet, so I got a fat lip now. We're dodging Joshua trees and come over this rise and there's this ditch. I was like, I think I got this and stayed on the gas. And then it stepped out another time and I drove it straight into the ground. <laughs> oh, that was a good one. A lot of scenery and a lot of history out there that people otherwise wouldn't see if they didn't know where to go. So we made it to Tea Kettle Junction. A little desert adventure in the middle of nowhere. If you pull into town and the locals are inviting you to go somewhere, do it because usually like these are the most authentic and interesting experiences of your trip. This is terrifying. I want out. BDR begins its partnership with the International Motorcycle Shows, IMS, by hosting the Adventure Out Pavilion at seven IMS shows across the country in the 2018-2019 season. A couple of years ago, we were invited by the International Motorcycle Shows to be the hosts of the Adventure Out Space to help inspire people to ride dual sport and adventure motorcycles. And I have to say, I think uh, that was one of the most visited areas of the show every year. The BDR board expands to seven people, with Tim James and Court Butler joining the BDR board, and the BDR team expands even further with the addition of Derek Roberts as social media manager. In 2019, BDR launches the European Tourism Outreach Marketing Effort in a RideBDR.com slash VisitUSA webpage providing information and travel resources specific to international riders in five languages. Three touring companies in the U.S. join as partners in this effort, including Motor Discovery, Colorado Motorcycle Adventures, and Backcountry Expeditions. BDR hires Good Souls, a PR and project management agency in Germany, to spearhead the effort in Europe. So we're just starting to see interest come in there, but it's something that we feel really good about, being able to share this BDR thing with Europeans. Um, it helps the tour companies, it helps make it more accessible, and it helps with this economic impact to these less advantaged rural communities. So we really think it's a win-win for everybody. The 10th BDR route, the Northeast BDR, is created under the leadership of Tim James, when it came time to develop the Northeast Backcountry Discovery Route, we took that same formula that we developed for the Mid-Atlantic and applied it. The challenge with this multi-state formula is that you have a lot more communities to deal with. To plot out a route to take you through the Northeast on backcountry roads, it would take you quite a while to come up with a, a, a 1,400 mile route. It took us a long time. It took us over two years to develop the, the NEBDR. So I reached out to the adventure riding community and people that I knew or knew of and asked them to be a part of the team. Uh, the creation of the Northeast BDR, we had six different locals that were instrumental in creating their little piece of that BDR. And so it's become a new model for us. I think it makes us a better organization, makes the routes better, and it makes it easier for us to create routes further from home, which I think is, is good for everybody. Special guests, Jocelyn Snow of GS Trophy fame, 
and eight-time AMA Enduro Champion Mike Lafferty of KTM join the filming expedition and become two of the more memorable characters in a BDR film. The Backcountry Discovery Rods, and it makes it easy to really step into adventure riding. It's all done for you. Get online and, and pick where you want to go, and the route's all figured out for you. The gas stops, the places to stay, and it, it takes a lot of the, the work away, so you can just really enjoy the ride, enjoy the scenery, stop at the small towns, and, and talk to the, the locals. There's nothing like it. For me, the challenge of that is just getting through it. It's not going fast anymore. You know, a lot of people go, oh, you know, Mike's gonna do this, it must be gnarly, it must be tough, it must be fast. Man, I'm so over going fast. Just to get through something, whether it's super slow or whatever, as long as I get through it, I'm good with it. Okay, so what was not featured in the Northeast BDR final film is that we actually had three women crash in one day. And curiously, we were all riding in front of the champ himself, Mike Lafferty. When Ina got up, she left. She told ass from me. And we were going in on these roads. I'm like, Ina's gone. I, I, was, I was like, I am not going there. I just came around the corner, and the first thing I saw was Ina walking out of the bushes. <laughs> no, you didn't. <laughs> she went straight, it was game over. I'm going in a little bit too fast in the corner. Got my bike in the bushes. The visor was gone, the bike was all f***ed up. I'm like, oh, this, this is for sure serious. I'm doing good. I think I uh, chipped my, my tooth a little bit. <laughs> Tell me about your shoulder. What happened? The shoulder I just popped right back in. I think uh, everything is fine with the shoulder. So Jocelyn, what are we going to do here? We're going to take it easy, right? And uh, she's like, yeah, we're going to take it easy. That was it. They're gone. <clears throat> when Jocelyn took off, I was like, dude, I, I do not want to go this fast. I swear to God, I'm not joking. I'm like, this chick is going too fast. I don't want to go there. I'm backing out of it. And as soon as she hit that first first hill, I'm like, oh, this is not gonna be a, this is not gonna be. <laughs> the bike uh, crashed dramatically. The bike crashed? I didn't have anything uh, to do with it. Had nothing to do with the crash. <laughs> oh, and the cylinder has a hole. Luckily, John Beck had a Rambo knife, so we were able to cut it into a, a piece and patch it over the hole with some JB weld. And then we we get to Victoria, <laughs> but she throws herself down and breaks her shoulder, and I'm like. I don't even want to be here right now. What the hell is going on? She got a little close to the edge. Her foot peg hit a stump and it just tossed her like a rodeo horse. How's it feel? Wing hurts. Wing hurt. Yep. So we gotta get her out of here. And even Tim James didn't escape the Lafferty curse and he crashed in front of Mike on pavement on Mount Washington. If I was gonna chuck it on this route, I was hoping not to do it on pavement, but unfortunately that's what happened. On the pavement. <laughs> I'm coming in. Is this Court Butler? Wait, Tell wait, you. Wait, why did you have to call Court? Okay. I'm sorry. You're left your, you left your. What are you calling? You left. <laughs> I chucked it on Mount Washington. <laughs> on the. <Okay>. <laughs> 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 All right, Justin. How many photos are you gonna send? Me? I really want I him mean, to see the I damage. Okay, we're gonna go see the damage. No, 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 we don't. <laughs> we gotta finish this bottle. You know, I don't know if the champ's gonna get out of bed. I'm really worried about him. I think he had a little bit too much to drink last night. Are you no, wicked just, tired? I'm wicked tired. Box wine out of a styrofoam cup. <laughs> <laughs> Real classy, yeah. huh? You, you know, the, the classy move was when he brought the styrofoam cup into the restaurant and then transferred from the glass. <laughs> Tell us about that. Yeah. So, Lavity's sitting there at dinner last night and he carried over his styrofoam cup full of box wine to the dinner table at the restaurant, sat at the head of the table with his little styrofoam cup and he ordered a glass of wine, go figure. And so the waitress comes over and pops down a glass of wine. He's a little, it's a little too dainty for him. So he takes that glass and he poured it back in his styrofoam cup and he's drinking it. So I've been on all 10 filming trips, haven't crashed out. In the last couple of days on the Northeast, I was starting to freak myself out that maybe I wasn't going to finish the 10th one because I really wanted to, to have that. So I, I'm really proud to have finished all 10. There's a lot for me to personally feel proud about. Um, with the BDR, 
Meeting this 10 year milestone has been really cool. You know, 10 years, 10 routes, 10,000 miles of adventure has been uh, a really good um, accomplishment. I'm really proud of the team we've put together. It's been just a pleasure. Um, one of the highlights of my career, really working with, with this group of people. <laughs> Over the 10 years, we've created 10 routes and 10,000 miles of adventure. And to think that these routes will live in perpetuity and our children and grandchildren will be able to enjoy these routes is just an, an incredible achievement and a testament to all the hard work with, that our volunteers and board members have put in over the years. Yes. In 2020, a record 60 film premieres are scheduled around the U.S. and BDR films become available for streaming and download on Amazon in addition to the Vimeo on-demand streaming platform. Bill Whitaker joins the board and continues to serve the Backcountry Discovery Routes as treasurer. Ron West joins the board and helps manage the Ambassador Program and continues to be the voice of the BDR. <laughs> well, at least in this video. To celebrate its 10-year anniversary, the creative team launches the BDR 10-year anniversary logo and releases commemorative apparel and products available to BDR supporters. So the BDR has kind of become the nucleus of this, this ecosystem of, of adventure riding in the U.S. We've got land managers, we've got uh, companies that are interested, OEMs, aftermarket companies, tour companies, map makers, uh, you know, just general riders, people that watch the film, enthusiasts, and it's all kind of connected by the BDR. We've created this BDR community or network, and it all just kind of works together. There's a lot of relationships and interdependencies and things, but it's uh, pretty cool to see how this thing has really blossomed and become a really key part of the, the foundation of the overall adventure riding scene. BDR rolls out its second PSA initiative with the Ride Respectfully program in an effort to promote respectful riding practices and help preserve motorcycle access. In 2020, BDR receives the 501c3 nonprofit organization designation to reflect its expanded mission. This allows donations to be tax deductible and expands options for employer match and planned giving fundraising opportunities for the organization. It was a really happy day, the day we got the 501c3 designation from the IRS. It was a big milestone for us. It's something we had dreamed about for years. It enabled people to take a tax deduction for the money they were contributing to the BDR. So, and so it made it just that much easier for them to make contributions to the BDR. So it was really important for the sustainability and the future um, of the organization. So where does the money go? Number one, of course, it's creating the new routes and managing the existing routes. Uh, also, money goes to film and map production, as well as professional photography. Uh, our safety and education programs, our access and advocacy initiatives, community outreach programs, and then, of course, office and administrative expenses. One of the most important questions we have is about the future. You know, what, what is the vision of the future? What's going to happen? Are we going to run out of states to do? Um, who's going to do the work? How are we going to keep up with this monster that we've created? As we continue to grow and add one route per year, we're also dealing with the challenges of managing more than 10 routes and managing the community's high expectations of the BDR. People often think the BDR is much bigger than it actually is. The BDR brand feels like a large organization because of the way that it looks and how much is accomplished. But in reality, we are still just a small staff and a small group of dedicated volunteers. Welcome to the BDR headquarters. This is where all the magic happens. If you've ever received a supporter package from us or stickers or t-shirts, this is where it came from. So if you're wondering where we are, we are in the loft in the Touratech USA warehouse. And this is where the BDR has operated since 2011. Yeah, it's a little bit hazardous here to say the least. You have to climb the stairs to get up to the loft. So as we move into the future, uh, the biggest challenges I see for the BDR uh, are being able to manage the ever-growing number of routes and miles, uh, making sure that we have the right team in place, and then having the resources to keep up with our growing user groups. Every single 
new route that we create, it's uh, it's like having another child in the family. It's another mouth to feed. When people um, get out their checkbook and make a donation to the VDR, that's a big part of what they're paying for is us to manage all those routes, to keep those open for the community to enjoy. One of the keys to success in our future is gonna be bringing in the next generation of adventure riders. One of our big objectives is to find the younger generation and get them engaged. Our future goals include fighting to keep roads open and create economic impact in less advantaged rural communities that are critical to keeping our roads open. What I want to do hopefully is get BDR riders to spend more at these little restaurants and at these little stores and support them because the simple fact that they're there enables BDRs to exist. We will continue creating one new route a year and at some point, we'll have to address the shrinking possibility for additional new routes in the U.S., begin to develop international routes, or other possible formats to provide riding opportunities. The good news is we still have many states left that we can do a good route in, and eventually we will reach outside of the U.S. borders. We'll start doing BDRs in other, other countries, other provinces. That's, that's what's in the future. We will continue expanding our international tourism effort and continue producing our safety and education messaging. The BDR mission has evolved, but it's really kind of just got the same five elements that it did in the beginning. We're just doing a lot more in those other areas now. BDR seems to have carved out a special place in the adventure motorcycle ecosystem of the U.S. and acts as a catalyst between the ADV community industry, media, land managers, writers, and other nonprofit organizations and groups. It will continue being the community hub that connects the various stakeholders who have an interest in adventure writing. BDR team looks forward to the next 10 years of continuing to serve its ever-increasing community of adventure enthusiasts connected by just one thing, their experience in riding a backcountry discovery route or their plans to ride one in the future. So in our last board meeting, uh, towards the end of the meeting, I said, you know, I think that it's time for BDR to move out of its parents' basement. So we just got the keys to our new office. Wow. Welcome to the new BDR headquarters. Yes. So we're moving in next week and all of the BDR operations from now on are gonna be happening from this office. So here we are in the new BDR headquarters, uh, four months after we have moved in. And so far, uh, we're really enjoying our new space. We've got enough uh, space for everyone here. We've got our project coordinator, Derek Holman, sometimes our fearless leader and board volunteer, Paul Gillian, comes and works out of this office. And also Erin, uh, our accountant, uh, works here sometimes. And this has been a great space for us. Um, plenty of storage for all the supporter packages, a place to package all the supporter packages. It's nice, warm and comfortable and our ceiling is not leaking. So it has been an amazing move, a big step forward for the BDR staff. Uh, so if you're in Seattle, uh, email us and come and visit, visit us in this office.
I got that on helmet cam! <laughs>